Slimes. Usually, we detest them in the mines. But actually, they make really good pets. Unfortunately, slimes aren't going to be making you big bucks and helping you get that return scepter. But they are pretty fun to raise and breed. So in this video, I will chat about the slime hutch and slimes. Getting the slime hutch is pretty easy and it's not actually that expensive. Just go to Robin, give her 10,000 gold, 500 stone, 1 iridium form, and 10 refined quartz and you are good to go. After 3 days, you will have your very own slime hutch that you can start creating your own slimes in. The number one tip I can give you here is to use an iridium sprinkler to keep your slime water bowls full. If there's no water in the bowls, they won't be able to produce more slime for you. Luckily, a single iridium sprinkler is enough to keep it full forever. Once you have built your first slime hut, Marlin will come visit you on your farm and he will give you your very first slime egg. Which is pretty cool, but it brings something else as well. Once you have built your first slime hutch, you will be able to get some slime eggs from defeating slimes. It only has a 1% drop rate though, but there are so many slimes in the mines, you are bound to find quite a few. You can either turn their slime eggs into actual slimes or you can sell them. Slime eggs sell for different prices based on their color. Green is the cheapest selling one at 1000 gold, then blue selling at 1750 gold, red at 2500 gold, and then purple slime eggs for an impressive 5000 gold. Added in the latest update, you can now get tiger slime eggs. These sell for 8000 gold, making them the most profitable slime eggs you can get. I decided to fully decorate my slime hutch because I usually just do things kind of lazy or I go for the most efficient route like with a shed full of cakes or my basement full of cosks. But I wanted to try something different and try and actually decorate a room and make it less boring. So the slime hutch is my first target. I will say I am new to decorating in Stardew Valley but I think it came out pretty well. I used iron fences, stone flooring to make the safe zone look different from the slime infested zone and I added 4 slime egg incubators. In hindsight, that many are not really required because it seems that they breed pretty fast on their own actually. To make a slime egg incubator, it will only cost you 2 iridium bars and 200 slime. I should have made less incubators and turned more slimes into slime eggs using the slime egg press. This little machine will turn 100 slime into a single egg. Most of the time the eggs will be green or blue. And if you are lucky, you can get a purple slime from this machine. The slime egg press is also pretty easy to make. You will only need 25 coal, 1 battery pack and 1 fire quartz. It is important to note that you don't actually have to place a slime incubator in a slime hutch. You can place it anywhere you want actually. You can put it in your coop to annoy your chickens or you can place it in the middle of town. There are actually a bunch of interesting interactions with the slimes and the townspeople so I would recommend giving this a try. Just don't hatch too many slimes. They will breed and there is no population control so they can quickly get out of hand. Something crazy happened on my playthrough. The day that my first four slimes hatched, the witch decided to come by and turn all of my slimes into black slimes. Most people would say this is very unlucky, but I found it to be super lucky because I didn't have any slimes. And then the day they hatched, the witch decided to come. The aim of this design was to make it safe to put more eggs in the egg incubators without allowing the slimes to hurt you too easily. Unfortunately, it didn't really work out how I intended it to, especially since the slime balls are randomly scattered and you have no choice but to run through the slimes, taking big chunks of damage. This is where the slime charmer ring comes into play. The slime charmer ring is exceptional and kind of mandatory if you want to breed a large amount of slimes. Once you start getting purple slimes and even tiger slimes, you will see that they actually do quite a lot of damage to you. So complete the Adventurer's Guild quest that tasks you with defeating 200 slimes and you can get yourself a slime charmer ring. You won't regret it. 
Your slime hatch has a maximum slime capacity of 20 slimes, which seems like a lot, but it wasn't quite enough for me. So I made a small slime pen on the side of the slime hutch. My beach farm is pretty full and I didn't have much space left, so this little pen is pretty small. So I had an idea. I had an idea to create a giant pen for my slimes, a place where I can breed as many slimes as I want. Maybe you have guessed it, but the quarry. I cleared out the entire quarry and filled it with flooring so the new rocks and ores won't spawn here. Then I gave it a small pause to make it feel more natural and put in some lighting for nighttime. If you plan to do this, remember to put a fence and a gate by the entrance to the quarry by the bridge. I also moved all of my slime incubators here and started hatching as many slimes as I could. I quickly realized that the only way to get a tiger slime is by defeating tiger slimes on Ginger Island. And I hope you are extremely lucky and get a tiger slime egg drop. So I headed off to Ginger Island and I won't lie, I defeated every slime on the island including the volcano on my first attempt. And the last slime I defeated dropped the tiger slime egg that was so extremely lucky and just what I needed. I continued to hatch as many slimes as possible, six at a time. The slime incubator takes three days to hatch a slime, so at least it is quite fast compared to hatching dinosaurs or ostriches. And before you know it, I have quite a large slime army. But since the quarry is so big, it doesn't look like I have that many. But there are actually quite a lot of slimes here. I probably won't hatch any more slimes. I think I will just let them breed and see what kind of colors come out naturally. Male slimes are identified by an antenna on their head. Often a male slime will attempt to breed with a female. He will usually see a heart above his head to confirm. If the female is not interested, she will have an exclamation mark over her head. If both slimes have hearts, they will run to each other and a baby slime will be born. The baby slime is very small, but soon it will grow to be a deadly slime killing machine. Every time two slimes breed, the baby has a chance to take a color from each parent. And sometimes when two slimes of different colors breed, the resilient color will be different from the parents. So far, I only have one unique slime in my collection, a yellow slime. Apparently, the most rare and hardest to breed slime is a white slime. I would try to breed for one, but I don't want to confine my slimes to tiny places places and force breed them for a specific color. Instead, I would rather let me run around on the quarry and see what other colors come out naturally. I think with this many slimes in one place, if I left them and came back in a different season, there would really be a crazy amount of slimes here. And that brings us to the end of the video. What do you think of the slime hutch? Do you use it? And if you have a cool slime hutch design, consider joining my discord and dropping a screenshot of it. I need some inspiration. I am so bad at decorating. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. It was a lot of fun to make. I got to be a little bit more creative and I think I got attacked by slimes about a thousand times just in this video. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. But for now, I will see you in the next video.